But they buy a stock and they think if it goes up, it's wonderful. And if it goes down, it's bad. We think just the opposite. The cryptocurrency market is crashing. When it goes down, we love it because we'll buy more. And if it goes up, we, it kills us to buy more. With Bitcoin coming off of a 32% correction, with Bitcoin dominance creeping higher, now at over 55%, and with the market for almost the last month in extreme fear. But if you can't get yourself in that mental attitude, you're going to be scared whenever other, everybody else is scared. We are not in altcoin season yet. Actually, clearly far from it. We're in Bitcoin season. But understanding that dips are normal, even in bull markets, and as the Federal Reserve pivots and finally begins to cut rates, a reduction in our policy rate could be on the table as soon as the next meeting in September. All while global liquidity begins to enter the market in a bigger way in 2025. Nothing we've seen over the last uh, few weeks or months has already dented the uptrend in global liquidity. We're still risk on, we continue to be risk on. Waiting for altcoin season to hit, for me, is actually when I wanna sell my altcoins. Buy in the red, sell in the green. If you have a temperament, that when others are fearful, you're going to get scared yourself. You know, you are not going to make a lot of money in securities over time. And while Warren Buffett famously hates Bitcoin. Is it still rat poison? Probably rat poison squared. If he was born maybe 50 years later, here are the top five institutional grade altcoins that I believe he would be into based on the fundamentals. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor, nor can I see the future. Investing in cryptocurrency is very risky. But with XRP about to have major news. And you're coming here with sort of good news, I guess, for people who have been following what you do. You could be launching your stablecoin a bit faster than most people thought. XRP today makes our list at number five. Well, we've always been kind of consistent that we're going to launch, do everything we can to launch this year. Uh, everything Ripple does is in conjunction with regulatory approval, licensing, and so a key issue that we will continue to make sure we are partnered with U.S. regulators before we go live with the stablecoin. We'll first issue it, uh, we expect, in the U.S., but we think there's opportunity for stablecoins globally. And certainly Japan, as you, I think, probably know, they approved some legislation a year ago that came into effect this year. And so there's uh, a process underway now to do stable coins here in Japan as well. Yeah, I want to talk about that. But when we're talking about the U.S., we're talking about a matter of weeks for this launch. So not only has a U.S. judge officially concluded that XRP is not a security, and with the over $169 billion stable coin economy, which today is primarily on Ethereum and Tron, finally coming to the XRP ledger. Yeah, our expectation has been to move as quickly as we can. Uh, you know, some people, I think, thought well, that might be the very end of the year. We won't know for sure until regulators say, yes, we have the green light. Uh, but we're optimistic. We acquired a company uh, called Standard Custody, which had a New York DFS trust license. And there's a process you go through to kind of transfer that and how it's going to be used. We've had a great partnership with the New York DFS, Department of Financial Services, through a bit license we've had for many years. Uh, and we'll continue to partner with them and work through that with them before we go live. Point number four on today's list. And for those who watched this video, BlackRock's top five crypto altcoins to buy now, understand that this altcoin, Ando Finance, is heavily integrated with BlackRock already. Yeah, I'm Nate, so I'm the founder and CEO of Ando Finance. It's institutional grade finance on chain for everyone. We are in the business of tokenizing so-called real world assets. Uh, we have a special focus right now on cash and cash equivalents. So we have a short-term treasuries fund that's accessible to US and non-US accredited investors. And then we have a de facto permissionless yield bearing token backed by treasuries that can be traded and used very similarly to stable coins, but uh, that pays its holders a yield. And we also recently announced our plans to get into the tokenization of other public securities, um, equities and bonds that have existing deep liquidity and uh, plan to unveil that in more detail later next year. The news today is this. Watch Coindesk's Jenny S. discuss the landmark moment as tokenized US treasuries surpass $2 billion in value. While $2 billion is an impressive milestone for the recently launched funds, there is far more potential given the treasury market's massive size of $27 
$1.5 trillion. BlackRock's USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund is a big driver in the soaring market cap of the notes. The Biddle Fund became the largest tokenized treasury fund just six weeks after its launch in March. And how this affects you if you hold on, though, that while BlackRock's Buildle Fund is the largest tokenized treasuries fund to date, Ando Finance is the largest tokenized treasuries provider. Franklin Templeton and Ando's funds were also seeing explosive growth this year, ranking the second and third largest just behind BlackRock's Biddle. Point number three on today's list is SWE, which global macro investor Raul Pal believes could be the next Solana. The biggest game in town, however, is what is the Solana of this cycle? If you remember Solana last cycle, was huge. The news today is this. Sui Network was 14 times cheaper than Solana and 900 times cheaper than Ethereum in August. The question is, is what is that one of this cycle? Because you can make some real money in that bet. I'm not going to waste your time. If you want to know what Sui is or the potential or what they're building, I would highly recommend this video. Cody comes in as next on our list. It's an Ethereum scaler, an Ethereum L2 with privacy. Founder of Cody explains why you need privacy in decentralized finance. Confidential DeFi is obviously huge. Uh, first of all, it solves the problem of exploitation and manipulation and, uh, and MEV because the transactions are private. Then it allows you to build sophisticated um, trading algorithms without showing them to everybody because people can't just follow what you do or front run you. It allows you to do lending and borrowing without showing your wallet to, to the world. Hey, and by the way, anybody looking for a great place to buy, sell, or trade altcoins, join me on Bybit now and grab a $20 sign-up bonus immediately and then earn up to $30,000 in exclusive rewards with referral code altcoin daily. And just for people that watch today's video, if you're looking to earn up to $528 in Ando or in Aether or Injective, Foxy, or any of these eight altcoins, register to claim now. You do have to deposit $100 into your account to get started. Directions as well as terms and conditions are linked down below. Again, $500 position airdrop for these altcoins, one of them, only for people that watch today's video and register under Altcoin Daily. Link down below. And that brings us to our final coin. They have just completed the revolutionary Chang hard fork. It makes Cardano one of the most decentralized protocols in crypto. And in a direct quote from founder Charles Hoskinson, the biggest threat to Bitcoin's dominance has and always will be Cardano. And you know what? Bitcoin no longer has earned the right to call itself the only sound money blockchain. Cardano is here too. And we will not allow the maxis in the Bitcoin ecosystem to take that from us. ADA is sound money. We are far more decentralized. We are deflationary in our monetary policy. And we have honored all as our community, the commitments and principles and promises that were made. And we have engaged in a long arc roadmap and been up for seven years. At what point are we a real cryptocurrency? They'll never say it because they understand that the biggest threat to Bitcoin's dominance has and always will be Cardano. Because we were the ones who listened to the innovators in the Bitcoin ecosystem, whether it had been the innovators with, high, with Lightning, the innovators with Color Coins, the innovators of Satoshi's vision and where he wanted to take it and how it would change the world. And so many of these people, because I was there personally for more than 10 years, again and again and again, proposed amazing ideas, whether they be color coins or such. And none of them ever really ended up becoming first class citizens in the Bitcoin roadmap because they said perfection was achieved January 3rd of 2009. We were the ecosystem that listened and finish the work. Head on over to our Twitter if you want to watch the full clip. It's linked down below. If I missed a coin, or if you could add one more coin to this list that Warren Buffett you believe would like, comment as well. And like always, see you tomorrow.